Hello and welcome to this brand new video. We're going to dive straight into El Calibre. It is a fantastic etching that is going to get your entire technique up and running, apart from tremolo. So you are going to straight away start off with an IM set of fingers. I would suggest that you work IM, IA, and IM to get the full benefit out of it, but that's only if you have time. You're going to need some patience. This is quite challenging to a certain degree, but I'm going to step you through the bars bit by bit. Main tips here are sequential planting, full planting, wherever you can. Start slow. Your technique will catch up. This is a great warm up, but at another stage, it is also a fantastic piece for pushing your technique and more importantly, your speed in scales and arpeggios through the roof, which is what you want. So let's dive straight into the first section of El Calibre by Sagrias. Alrighty, left hand, here we go. Starting off with second finger, we're gonna slide up to seven. Four, two, one. One, three, four, one, two, three. And then you're going to shift position all the way up to 14. And again. So with these big slides, you are going to have to laser ahead. So here my eye is on seven. And at this point, my eye is here at 14. All together, this little bit looks like. That is the first little micro study. From that point, you are going to shift into the next micro study, which is an arpeggio. So when you work this, your main focus should be your right hand fingering I am, and then making sure that your left hand is coordinated with it. And there you are going to switch into the thumb for the next micro study. Welcome to micro study number two. So micro study number two is this chunk from fret 13 with your second finger on string four. P, M, I, A, shift. P, M, I, A, shift. So you are literally shifting down from 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, to eight to that B flat there. Helicopter lifts with your left hand. You want to move your left hand straight up, shift down. You don't want to do leaving it down. So up and down with the left hand. Right hand sticking to the strings that are required. Speed it up, slow it down, but main thing is to make sure that this is not happening. You want the legato melody. That involves fluid quick shifts, and again, my eye is slowly, incrementally moving ahead of my fingers by one fret. And then we're into the next micro study. Alrighty, welcome to the next micro study. We left it off here at fret eight with finger two. You are then gonna do a switch for the right hand. That's just gonna go straight into P I M A. Onto an open string. String three gets a third finger. String two gets a first finger. Open E, and then your fourth finger is gonna go onto that high C sharp. Now I would suggest that you take those other fingers off straight away. Because you're going to shift up and you need to be up at 12 with the first finger at 9 for the next section. So because of the speed of the piece it's not going to make that much of a difference in terms of legato. <clears throat> and we're into the next section. So the next section, the bass goes from string 5. Here it is 4 2. Left hand is 3 to 4, 3 to 1, 4 to 2. And then you're going to zoom all the way up from here to fret 19. And then you're in 
into an open. So altogether that little section looks a little bit like this. And I actually do a little bit of before we complete the octaves there. So you're going to be doing high B, middle B, and the trick there is to use your thumb. First note before getting your IM fingers back in. This is quite challenging. You are going to struggle a little bit with this. Lasering ahead for sure. Now my eye is down here. Open strings and my eye is back on second. And then again, once I've secured the position, my eye looks ahead. So you're going to need quick eye movements to be ahead of your hands. And that is it pretty much for that first entire section because we now get a repeat of the material that we have seen before. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take a look at the right hand here. You're looking at that sequentially stopped nice sound. Switching into sequential planting all the way through here to make sure that my fingers are a hundred percent on the right strings the more you do this the better it becomes that goes throughout this entire first section <laughs> Switching again to the top string and using at a slow speed you can really hear the pop, 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 pop. so please keep that in mind and make sure that is what you are doing when you are playing through pretty much every bit of this piece that's your right hand sequential planting nice and secure Alrighty, so we're back in at the B section. This is a repeat. I am just going to walk through it until we get a change. Right, from this point, we are going to slide up again. Fifth string bass, but this time instead of going down to a D sharp, we're going down to a D natural. D natural to C sharp. So it's four to two, two to one, and then into the C to B. The main difference here after all that B section repeat is D natural, two to one, into the, the double Bs with the C sharp before we're going to move into the next micro study. All right, welcome to the development section. We have Sagrias developing the material now. We've had two repeats of the opening uh, sort of theme, as it were. So we, we left it off here at fret seven. You're going to hammer on seven to eight with the fourth finger. And then your first finger is going to stretch back to five. Now I use an open string here, eight to five, pull off, hammer on the fourth finger to seven, first finger stretches out to a bass note at three, pull off, so that is a seven to three, three to five hammer on, bass note moves down to F sharp, four to one, now I use a third finger there because the next chord is a C with an F sharp. It is possible however from here to keep the bass on the sixth string and just move down. Notice my fingers are in position before I need the chord. And then we're going to shift up into a fret eight for a little chromatic. 
static in the next micro study. So altogether, that looks a little bit like this. Right, welcome to the first little scale segment that we've got in this. We're using an open string E to shift, then you're up at fret 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. Seven. So from the previous chord, here we got, notice my fingers are up in the air because I know that the next shape is a series of 6. That are going to float down the fretboard. So I already know that, so I'm getting prepared with my fingers. I would suggest a little burst practice like that. Before we move into the next micro study. So putting that little section together, it looks like this from the previous chord. Also use my thumb to stop that low E bass note. That's very important. We don't want that ringing over. Right, let's move on to the next micro study. Welcome to the next micro study. So we left it here at seven and eight with fingers two and three. There is a top voice and a tenor voice, so please keep that in mind. Your thumb is generally going to be playing the tenor voice. So pull off. So it's a three one there on the tenor voice. Pull off four to two. Your second finger is then going to guide down onto seven. Open G. Pull off four to two. Or three to two. It's your choice. Then you're going to guide down to fret five of two. F sharp at fret four. Four two. And now this is the, the tough change. Two is going to guide down to fret three. Four is going to come on at fret five for that E. Now we're moving into octaves. Finger one is going to nail the octave E at fret two. Pull off four two. We are then going to move into the next octave. Two moves to fret two. Three comes off D. Open D. Four two. C. Open E. Now stop in the D bass but we'll get to that. C. I would suggest taking your first finger off to nail that F sharp change and then we're finally ending up at B and D sharp with a pull off 4 to 0. Now there is a lot there so I would suggest busting it up into these little chunks. Chunk 1. Chunk 2. Chunk 3. Chunk 4. When you practice that, you need to, that thumb has got to come up to stop that bass. Last chunk. Before we're into the next section. All together with the previous little scale run, it sounds a little bit like this. Hi, I hope you're enjoying this lesson. If you are, consider hitting the like button and maybe even subscribing to the channel. There is a ton of new content coming your way. Koshkin, Dian's Morvilla Lobos. I am generally looking at the 20th century for classical guitar. With that in mind, let's just dive straight back into this fantastic piece by Sagrias. Alrighty, welcome to the next little scale section. This time it is chromatic, so we're pulling off from the B to D sharp, uh, from the D sharp to B. Open, three, two, one, open, four, three, two, one, pause, eight beats, one, four, three, two, one, open, four, three, one, I would suggest that because you're going to shift up to seven. 
for the next bit. So notice that there is no open D natural. There is an open G natural and an open A natural, but no D natural. And then we're on to the next micro study. Lovely quick short one there. I would suggest you practice that on its own as a, a little micro study to get your chromatics uh, running up and down the fretboard. It is a great, great section. Right, this is the last kind of uh, couple of shifts before we move into the uh, repeat or the recapitulation. So we left it off here at F sharp. A beat, that is going to slide up to seven. Seven beats, and then you're going to pull off two to one, three to one, so C natural, C sharp, four to one, stretch it out, D sharp. And at this point, I would suggest switching to two because the next bar is a three two, two one. So that sounds. jump to two and then back into the recapitulation of the A section. So that's a fantastic bit of music. I'm just going to put those last two micro studies together, the chromatic, into these lovely little uh, slurs, as it were, and it sounds a little bit like this. Again, as usual, the usual advice, uh, it's going to be on my tombstone, laser ahead, super key to getting those nice and clean and not missing your frets. Okay, so we have a recapitulation. I'm not going to go through that. That is the first sort of micro study that I did with the left hand, where we just walk straight through all of the section again. <laughs> So you can uh, <laughs> just, I want to get into it. And that is where we're going to pick up from those octaves. From that point, we are moving into the next, the next little scale segment. And it moves from a two all the way into seven using open strings. So it's going to be open, C sharp, D sharp. And I'm using IMA there. And then it is seven, eight, ten, and then I am straight into a half bar here because I know what's coming next. That is the next, the next little sort of development section. So I know I need it. This is going to need a little bit of practice if you if you haven't done that before. Make sure that that seven last note of the little run is a half bar so that you're in position because otherwise you're going to have to do this makes no sense and there we go we're into the next micro study and homeward bound alrighty welcome to the next micro study here we have a tenor bass line slowly down the strings to a low E. We then have a melody. Now what's happening is it's not a half bar as such but you are going to be using your first finger to mark the territory. So here it is fret 7 we have a 4 to 2 pull off. We then move down to fret 5 with a 4 to 3 pull off. Then down to fret 4 for a 4 to 2 again. Then down to fret 2 for a 4 to 2. I then stay there and I just play open string two to one. My 
My second finger then bounces straight up for the C and I use one to zero. And then my first finger is down on the, the B at fret two for the four to three at that section. So altogether that sounds a little bit like. issue here apart from keeping your melody nice and clear is those quick shifts. Now I, I've got pretty old strings so you can't hear the squeaks as well but you need to maybe lift your first finger a tiny tiny bit to get those squeak free. Continuing that idea we have this little repetitive motif on string two while our bass notes go from the A to the G, F sharp, back until we end eventually that lovely big idea on a diminished chord that first finger is going to have to do a big jump so be aware of that right hand mechanism has to come up to get that on the inner strings of the guitar so altogether that sounds like And then we are homeward bound. Welcome to the homeward section. So this is the coda. It's a fantastic run now from this point into the end of the piece. We have a diminished arpeggio. So I'm just gonna walk through the left hand fingers first. One to four hammer on, two, zero to three, two, open, four. Then we have zero, three, two, open. You are then going to shift and you should be lasering ahead to fret 12 where it is four, three, two, four, and then you are going to have a couple of choices. In the score you are looking at 14, 15, 14, 15. That is what uh, Seglias has put but I have got a little hack for that. So from that point I use an open string and I go into that and then that. So I'm using an open E instead of that fretted E, but the choice is yours. By the way, you are going to end up on fret 18 with your B finger in a very high position. And key to this is remember, you do not start on the beat. It's not one, it's a one and a two. Okay, so that's very important. And then we're into the next little section for the micro study. This is a challenge. There is no two ways about it. It is a ramp up. It's a massive challenge because this is meant to be really, really fast. Sectional practice will help you here. From a right hand point of view, we're looking at P, P, I, M, A, M. From this point on, I'm using P, I, M. P, I, M, P, I, M, A. From that point on to make it really, really easy for that. Alrighty, here we go. We're now going to move from that high. We're going to move from that high A sharp, we're going to move into a fret 12 with some repetitive notes. Third finger on, again an offbeat start, so it's the, this time it's a quaver offbeat start. Four to on, which is a fret 13 to 10, and then you're going to do a nice big stretch there, G to B or B to G. A to F sharp. Super important that has to be a four because the next series of notes starts repetitively with the third finger again. Notice we're in an octave. Four to one, four to one, same series of notes and then back into that octave and then here we go again. And then we're into that ending there. 
So it's just a repetitive octave of B, C to A, B to G, A to G, E, C to A, B to G, A to F sharp, E, B, C to A, B to G, A to F sharp, and then we're into an E minor arpeggios to end off. Practice it in those chunks and then put it together. micro study making sure that is that is the key to this is this is nice and clean lovely clean pull-offs there they're a bit tough but it's a fantastic workout for fingers one and four okay so we're ending off with an E minor arpeggio a slightly unusual one to what we've normally encountered uh, a slightly unusual one so we're gonna be doing zero to four two to three so there's your E minor arpeggio open strings PP, IMA, then you're going to go straight onto fret 12 for the high B and G. Back onto open strings after that, open G, B and E, half bar at 12, third finger on a high G, and then you're going to shoot up to the high B. So again, sections and chunks. high B and then we're going to come back for harmonics on strings 6, 4, 3 and 1 at fret 7 into strings 6, 3, 2 and 1 fret 5 and again to make those harmonics pop here's the difference that was played here now moving it back those ones in particular are going to need a little bit of extra help so really move back to the back of the guitar so all together that should sound like This has been brought to you by classicalguitarrocks.com at the home of six string inspiration. There are loads and loads of lessons. Only place to learn all 12 of Villalobos's etudes and his preludes. And then there is a ton of Brower and other modern guitarists such as Koshkin and of course Dianz. If you're interested, head over there to grab some six string inspiration today.